this is Kristen with Repair University and you know we've gotten a lot of questions lately around not only just the changes that are going in the vehicles for materials and substrates but the changes that are happening in cars for electronics and the problems that that's causing in today's collision repair centers whether it's malfunction indicator lamps or diagnostic trouble codes so we brought in an expert to talk with you a little bit about what's new in the vehicles electronically that we're going to be doing in repair Jake thanks for coming down thanks for having me now we have um seen over the last several months and all of the the forums and even in the industry events that we've gone to this enhanced discussion over vehicle diagnostics can you break that down for us a little bit well i think it's a it's a way for the uh the manufacturers are responding to the consumers and our consumers are changing to where they want more technology in their cars they want their cars to interface with their phones they want new safety features they want the cars to be fuel efficient uh, so there's there's lots of things that the manufacturers are trying to do to answer that call now, for us in the collision repair industry, we kind of think that, that, oh, that's all well and good, and that has a lot to do with maybe why I would purchase a vehicle, and we sometimes forget how that's going to apply to us once this gets in our stall. So if you don't mind, what I'd like to do is just kind of break the car down front to back and talk about some of the things that gonna, the shop may encounter in collision repair as it relates to codes. So let's start with the one thing that's pretty much on every estimate, whether it's because it's damaged or because we're going to do some painting, and that's bumper covers. There's a lot of stuff hiding in bumper covers and it can have a, a direct effect on how the bumper cover is repaired, uh, what kind of part you can use, all those kinds of things. Uh, some an example of those systems are you know, blind spot monitoring uh, radars. They're either bumper cover mounted or they can be mounted on the quarter panel just behind the bumper. Uh, there's, there's OEM documentation that says that you can't repair the bumper in the area of those radars. Uh, there's other documentation that says that you can't use bumper stickers, that the bumper, tover, bumper cover has to be clean. Uh, there can't be snow, any of those kinds of things, uh, or it affects the way the system performs. The parking sensors, for instance, uh, they, a lot of times they cannot be um, repainted, so they're, they're a replacement item in a bumper cover repair. Uh, another example would be the uh, ambient temperature sensors, often overlooked, and sometimes it's just a little wire hanging there because the bumper got ripped off. Uh, but it affects the, you know, the cold start enrichment, uh, the automatic climate control, and of course the temperature display on the dash. So, you know, like you mentioned, there are lots of, lots of systems and uh, sensors in these bumpers that collision repairs need to be aware of. So that's affecting me, not only just whether I'm going to be replacing that bumper cover or making maybe a repair decision, but that's even affecting a blend decision. I know a lot of us, you know, we like to, if we're doing a quarter, we like to blend into that rear and fenders, we like to blend into that front, but right. is that going to affect my ability to even perform that in a repair? Right, you know, the, the, the paint mill thickness can definitely have an effect on the sensors behind the bumper cover. and. Well, you sure don't want to find out that they're not working after you've got the vehicle reassembled. So, you know, as repairers, we're going to have to do our research to understand how are these cars equipped and how do those systems work and what kind of action do I need to take. Now, I think a lot of times as repairers, we think that we have to really worry about those electronic systems when there is a damage. But even if I'm just doing something as simple as an R&I of a cover, I've got to go back and reset a lot of electronics instead of just reassembling that car and putting it out front, right? That's correct. You know, I mean, you know, customers spend thousands of dollars on, you know, options on top of the base model cost of the vehicle, and they're acutely aware of how these systems work, uh, oftentimes better than we are. You know, they, they know that they can go and, you know, pull into their garage and not worry about hitting something because there's a, there's a backup camera there. So we, we have to be aware of those systems and how they work. Well, let's keep going down the car. So, I mean, right after, uh, usually when I'm talking about bumper covers, well, I'm going right straight next into lights. What are some issues around lights when it comes to electronics? Well, there's a lot of intelligence built into lighting. You know, we have adaptive headlights. Um, we have theft-coded headlights to where they're, they're coded to the VIN number of that car, making LKQ not an option. So, you know, there's a lot of procedures. A lot of times these headlights will communicate to a steering angle sensor and that's how the headlight knows to turn left or to turn right. So uh, when we R and I a headlight or we replace a headlight, we have to understand how that system works before we can make a decision. Let's just keep going on down the side of the car. What, on fenders, I mean, hey, come on, is there really anything electronically when it comes to a fender that I need to be concerned about in the body shop? Seems like they're tucking it everywhere these days. It's, it's on the perimeter of the vehicle and I uh, recently read about uh, TPMS sensors that are actually tied into a, an antenna they could either be apron mounted or fender liner mounted. 
Uh, so if we're, we're doing any wheel and tire operations, that's something to think about. So if I'm changing that fender once I've moved all that stuff, I'm probably going to have to be sending that off right. for calibration or doing it in the shop myself. Right. If I have that. <clears throat> it's just going to change the way I think about tire rotation in the future and whether right. I'm going to let Walmart do that for me anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So let's, uh, let's keep going down because yesterday, you know, as we talked a little bit more in depth about this and I realized as soon as I kind of detrimmed a door and headed it to the paint booth, you told me, you know, hey, as soon as you put that key in that ignition and you drove that car in, now you've created a problem. <laughs> but let's talk about what all's in a door panel, whether it's replace right. or it's just detrim for refinish. Right. Well, we talked a little bit about the blind spot monitors and another part of that system uh, would involve the mirror which you know, indicates to the driver that there is somebody in the blind spot. Sometimes that can be a symbol in the glass or it can be a light on the inside of the, of the, um, of the mirror itself. Um, so it's usually in the mirror area, so if you take the mirror off, you could have an issue. Um, they're also putting airbag pressure sensors inside the door, so even a broken clip or a water shield, which changes the pressure inside the door, could affect an airbag deployment. Uh, as you get into comfort and convenience items, there's touch sensors in the door handles that identify the key owner, the, the owner of the vehicle has the key fob on their person and to unlock and lock the vehicle at the owner's command. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff in the doors as well. And when we disconnect a door, uh, we need to make sure that we restore all the memory functions and teach the window to auto up and auto down as well. So uh, lots of stuff in the door. Right, and, and what was kind of surprising to me is, you know, there's no lights for that, right. as you were telling me in the shop right. yesterday. So I'm reassembling that door, and I, I think I'm okay, yeah. but that customer's probably going to come back to me next week and really upset that that, you know, touching that door handle doesn't unlock their car anymore. It's an immediate fail. We walk out, they go out to unlock the car, and it doesn't perform the way they know it's supposed to perform, and uh, it doesn't really matter how good the paint looks or if the, everything's lined up. It, they don't take it. So let's talk about quarter panels, whether mm -hmm. uh, you know whether I'm replacing or sectioning or whatever, there seems to be more and more stuff in the quarter of these cars these days. Right. What's waiting there for a collision repair? A lot of times in quarter panels, we're seeing more of the electromagnetic pulse from the welders affecting either control modules that are housed inside the quarter panels, uh, roof airbags, satellite airbag sensors, and if we're taking back glass out as well, there's, there's some, there could be some concern there. So uh, with quarter panels, you know, especially in replacement and sectioning operations, you're talking welding and you know, there's battery disconnects that need to happen. You know, uh, we're taking headliners out. They're building technology into the headliners, which is pretty incredible because it's almost impossible to buy a vehicle nowadays without hands-free because it's a law in some states. So that means that there's, blue, there's Bluetooth microphones mounted in the headliners. So we pull a headliner out and we forget, forget to connect the Bluetooth it just won't work. It doesn't tell us that it's disconnected. So that's where the diagnostic scan becomes critical. Now you've led into it really, you know, really nice with the glass because I was uh, a little, I don't want to say shocked, but surprised recently at an event where we had heard a, a story about how just replacing a windshield on a particular vehicle had yep. left eight to 10 codes in the system yeah. that had rendered a lot of systems inoperable. And right. I think there's a lot of mobile glass repair out there. And we know they're not carrying scanners around with them. Right. So what are some of the issues to just simple replace or R&I of glass for a refinish right. operation? Well, you know, I think I think you're, the glass companies will be the first to tell you that the, the collision avoidance uh, cameras and lane departure cameras are becoming a real problem for them because they're having to install the glass at dealerships with factory level scan tools to actually calibrate those systems. And, and you know, unfortunately, the, the, the scan tool is only about 50% of the equation. You, you need external targeting, and in some cases, you need a dedicated space to do it so that you can complete the calibration that the collision avoidance is uh, going to work. It's certainly something you don't want your technicians or your employees testing the collision avoidance uh, in a customer's vehicle. So that's where uh, checking the vehicle with a scan tool is going to be priority number one. Yeah, I know a particular executive for one of the companies in our in our industry that got himself a new Mercedes that had a collision avoidance system and he used to kind of make fun of us all by putting us in the front seat and wanting to drive toward a wall right. <laughs> and it would shut itself off right. and now I'm thinking if he ever gets a windshield replaced I'm not going back in that car with him for that right. stunt. And, and like the bumper covers even a the parts choice is going to be a factor. Will the aftermarket part perform the same? Will the windshield calibrate with an aftermarket windshield? So these are all questions I think that we have to ask ourselves when we're making those decisions. All right, so we know we've got all this electronics in there and I think a lot of people watching this are, are kind of like me when we were learning just as simple as, I just wanted to blend the door. I didn't, right. didn't want to create yeah. a, a nightmare. What's a shop to do? 
with all of these electronics coming at them, obviously, Jake, I can't go buy every factory scan tool right. that's out there. And I know that the aftermarket tools leave me a lot of holes when it comes to those comfort and convenience issues for customers. Right. What are my options? Well, you know, you have a couple options. Um, you know, the systems on these cars speak to proprietary um, diagnostic languages within the vehicle, so a specialized tool is needed to talk to those systems. Uh, you, you have a couple options. You can continue to go to the dealer, which is really not practical, and it's uh, you kind of lose control of what's what's going on with your vehicle. Mobile diagnostic technicians are another option. Um, they, typically, you're at their time, at their schedule, not your own. Um, but a new a new uh, solution that's kind of hitting the market is the Aztec 2. Uh, the Aztec 2 is a remote diagnostic interface that allows us. It's a pass-through device. It allows us to communicate with a car bi-directionally over the internet using factory scan tools and technicians from dealerships. So a collision shop can send in a request, tell us what kind of car it is, we connect the factory scan tool and put that tech on that vehicle and run pre and post diagnostic scans for the shop. So in a way it's like me having access to every OEM technician and kind of teleporting right. them into my shop for a couple of maybe 10, 20 minutes to fix a car. Correct. Yeah, and at least you know give you some direction on what to look at as far as the systems are concerned. Let's talk a little bit more about those proprietary systems because I really want to drill that down because there's a lot of people out there right now selling scan tools. Yep. And in fact, yesterday when, when you took me on a tour through a couple of shops, we had a lot of technicians come out and show us the particular tool they had bought. Right. They thought they were covered, but we found a lot of holes with their right. tools. How, what happened with that? Well, when you look at the mechanical industry and you look at the collision industry, mechanical industry, uh, they're focused on, on vehicles that are five to seven years old. So if you get anything newer than that, the, typically ha the vehicle typically has a, an extended warranty or is still under factory warranty. Uh, not so in the collision shop. In the collision shop, I think we encountered two cars yesterday that had, uh, they were still on their second and third tank of gas. A sticker glue, right. still in the window. Exactly, yeah. so, so you know, when it comes down to that, you really need access to an OEM scan tool to talk to that new of a vehicle because your aftermarket scan tools are typically 18 months behind in coverage. So when you're using the factory scan tools, you have access to those proprietary systems on the newer cars. Now, before I let you get out of here, I do want to drill into one topic a little bit more, a little deeper. The one thing that generally gets us a lamp in this industry is airbags. Right. But there are a lot of things that can go wrong with an airbag that maybe doesn't generate a lamp mm -hmm. or that we might have been charging for when we just needed to reprogram. And, and you brought a lot of that up when we were in the shops and right. some important information there in airbags. Can you just share some of that? Right. Well, because every collision event is different, every, every airbag deployment is different. So, you know, I know that there's an airbag deployed, but does that mean squib one, squib two? Is that front, you know, the front pretensioner, the front impact sensor? What sensors need to be replaced? Uh, what control modules are resettable? So there are some that are up, resettable up to three times. Uh, there are control modules that I need to pull coding from before I replace the module. Uh, so those, those kinds of steps, you know, that's vehicle by vehicle. So really uh, performing the diagnostic scan in addition to the repair information to make informed decisions on what airbag components to replace. So as the vehicles continue to evolve, there's going to be more and more electronics for us to mess with on our end of the collision repair. And from the customer standpoint, if they have to come back for anything, whether it's something as significant as lane departure or airbag lights, or something as, as maybe mild as a convenience feature, such as their satellite radio or their keyless entry, well, it causes them to lose confidence in us as the repairer and in the repair that we've done to their vehicle. So make sure that your shop is up to date on the latest diagnostic tools and procedures for each vehicle as it comes into your store and make sure that you're ready for the next evolution of electronics and collision repair.